Hello and welcome to a new video on the geotechnical Python package Groundhog. Today marks the 2021 Groundhog Day. On the 2nd of February, the Groundhog puts his head above the earth for the first time since the beginning of the winter. It marks the beginning of the spring, and since this year is the first year where you get to celebrate Groundhog Day in the presence of Groundhog geotechnical package, it's an extra special reason for celebration. In this video today, we'll be talking about CPT processing using Groundhog. CPT processing is an important task for many geotechnical engineers and Groundhog contains much useful functionality to execute that task. In today's presentation, we'll be talking about the new features of the version 0.4.0, which came out since the last video was recorded, and we'll talk about the requirements for CPT processing. First of all, we'll select layers from a CPT profile, we'll do CPT normalization, and then we'll apply some CPT-based correlations, which are a useful source of information on geotechnical parameters for many projects. In the next semester, I will also be using the geotechnical Python package Groundhog intensively in the geotechnics course at the University of Ghent, where I teach. So this will be an extra audience that will use the package and we will be able to give feedback on its performance. In the new version of Groundhog, I've added a module on cyclic soil properties. Many problems, such as offshore wind turbine foundation design, design of dynamic structures, machine foundations, earthquake engineering, they all come into contact with cyclic soil behavior. And based on the equations and diagrams in the paper accompanying the 2015 McClellan lecture by Knut Andersen, I've been digitizing a lot of those functions and making them available through Groundhog. In addition to that, um, the number of available CPT correlations has grown. So a correlation for unit weight according to the paper by Main et al. from 2010 and a correlation for shear wave velocity according to Robertson and Cabal have been added. In addition to that, uh, since the import process for CPTs from AGS files was a bit cumbersome, that functionality has been rewritten and now you can import CPT data from AGS files with just a single line of code. On top of that, the GEF file format is a commonly used standard in the Benelux. It originated in the Netherlands at Deltares. And now an adapter has also been written for the PCPT processing class to import data from GEF files with just a single line of code. Let's take off where we left it last time. In the last video on CPT data import, we had successfully imported data from various file formats into the Groundhog PCPT processing object. Now that we have the raw data, we need to start working with it. So we need to determine this stratigraphy, a task which is often uh, down to experience and also interpretation of the CPT traces. We need to calculate the derived cone resistance properties, normalized properties, vertical effective stresses, etc. And then we need to determine some soil mechanics parameters. All of those topics will be covered in this video. First of all, we can show how to establish a stratigraphy and a, um, a selection of cone properties for a CPT processing object. The stratigraphy determines the sequence of layers in which the cone has penetrated. So each measured point will belong to a certain layer. And we need to specify that layering to allow Groundhog to continue its further processing. The layering is given as Groundhog soil profiles. So if you remember what soil profiles are, they need to have a column with the top depth and bottom depth of each layer. In addition to that, in order to allow us to calculate the vertical total stress and the vertical effective stresses, we need to have the total unit weight of each layer specified as well. And then finally, we need to have a soil type for each layer clay, sand, sand clay, whatever you want, but you need to classify that in some kind of soil type. 
This information can be digitized either by typing it straight into Python as Python code, or you can simply import the SOAP profile from Excel. In the layering, each CPT data point will then be mapped to its, co its corresponding layer. The next thing we need to do is to let Groundhog know which CPT probe is used for each part of the investigation. Sometimes you have discontinuous CPTs, and in those discontinuous CPTs, the cone rod is replaced and you can have multiple properties. So again, the soil profile object is the most suitable object to reflect that. In the soil profile object, we again need to have depth from and depth to columns. And then the most important parameter is the cone area ratio, which gives the ratio of the shaft of the load cell um, rod to the total cone cross-sectional area. Because on the rear of the cone, if there is a pore water pressure filter, you can have some pressure acting downward and that needs to be corrected for. Again, each of these CPT data points that has been measured corresponds one-on-one -on -one to a given cone property. And in the next uh, slide, we'll show you how to map each point to its corresponding layer and corresponding cone property. The map properties method was developed specifically for that. And with that method, we simply say for the CPT, so PCPT in this code example is the CPT, PCPT processing object, we execute the map properties method on that object and we specify that the layering is contained in our SOAP profile layering and the cone profile is contained in our uh, cone properties, um, cone properties SOAP profile. In Groundhog, you also have a default for the cone properties. If you don't know what to use, you can use that but I would recommend that you consult the uh, logs of the, or the CPT report to know exactly which cone properties you have. Once we execute that mapping, the data attribute of the CPT processing object, which initially only contained the raw data, will be expanded with columns which reflect the layering, the layer number, the soil type, the total unit weight and the cone properties. So you will see the columns from the layering and the cone properties data frames added to the cone data. In addition to that, a vertical effective stress calculation is also performed and you can specify the water level in case the groundwater is not at surface. Once we have those layers mapped to our CPT data, we can execute the plot raw CPT method again to plot the, data, the raw CPT data, and we will see that the layers are now added to that CPT trace that allows you to visually investigate whether your layering that was selected is fit for purpose. And you can then adjust that layering and redefine it to make it um, better. The next thing we need to do is we need to correct and normalize the CPT data based on the cone properties. Especially the area ratio is important there, as I mentioned before, and QT total cone resistance includes the correction for that area ratio. So you correct for the pore water pushing down on a section of the cone. We also then have formulae to normalize CPT properties, which you can see on the right hand side. And these formulae can be executed with just a single line of code using the normalized CPT method, normalized PCPT method. If you execute that method on the CPT processing object, you will get additional columns in your data um, attributes which reflect the normalized properties. And once you have the normalized properties, it's just a simple step to plot them, because with plot normalized CPT, you will immediately display profiles of QT, FR, and BQ versus depth, and generally that will give you even a better resolution on uh, your layering. The Robertson charts are charts which have been widely used to classify CPT data 
and classify layers into certain soap properties. The Robertson charts are included with the uh, Groundhog package, and there are two image files, RobertsonFR and RobertsonBQ.png, which can be used to overlay the data on top of. So for each layer, the data points will be color-coded, as you can see on the right-hand side, and those data points are then overlaid onto the Robertson chart. So if you execute the method plots Robertson chart and then supply the directory in which those PNG image files are included, you will get the graph on the right-hand side and see where the dominant, uh, well, where the largest proportion of data points in your uh, layer plots. That allows you to classify your soil types yet again. We now come to a very important part of CPT processing, and that is the derivation of soil mechanical parameters from CPT data. In the absence of laboratory testing data, this is often a very useful source of information, and when compared and processed together with laboratory testing data, it becomes an even more valuable resource. In Groundhog, there's a growing list of correlation that's, that is being made available. So you can see correlations for the soil behavior type index IC, um, small strain shear modulus Gmax, friction angle, undrained shear strength, etc. All of these correlations are encoded as functions in Groundhog, so you can use them separately from PCPT processing as well. But here, if you want to apply them on an entire PCPT trace, you can simply call the apply correlation method and specify which correlation you want to apply by name. So you can see the list of available correlations in, uh, on the right-hand side as well. We need to specify which name our output column will get. So here in this example, we're going to apply the correlation for soil behavior type index according to Robertson and Wright and store that in the column IC and then units are unitless between square brackets. The result of the function behind IC, Robertson and Wright is actually a dictionary, a Python dictionary. So we need to let Groundhog know which key of the dictionary it needs to use to store in that output column. So that's why we also say that the result key is the key from that dictionary IC which needs to be stored. Here's another example on how we can arrive G maxes, derive Gmaxes from CPT data. And we can do that for different soil types with different soil profiles. That's where the keyword apply for soil types comes in because certain correlations have only been developed for cohesionless soils others have been developed for cohesive soils. So with that keyword argument, apply for soil types, and then including a list of the soil types for which you want to apply it, you can make sure that the correlation is only applied to the soil types for which you want to use it. So here in this case, the correlation for Gmax according to Ricks and Stoku is only defined in sand, the correlation according to Main and Ricks is only applied in clay. And in the plot, you can clearly see the two results, the one shown in blue and the other shown in orange. If you want to further customize your function calls, you can supplement apply correlation with the keyword arguments for the function used in the correlation. So for instance, if you have a K0 argument, as certain relative density correlations do, you can simply specify that optional keyword argument in the apply correlation method. You might wonder how the plot that shows the Gmax versus depth was generated. Well, that is simply a matter of calling the plot properties with log method. And that method will generate a plot defigure of the specified soil parameters plotted in a panel and it also displays a soil minilog, similar to what we've shown for CPT data or soil profile plotting. We need to specify which property keys we want to plot in each panel. We need to say whether we want to display the legend or not, and then define ranges for each panel and access titles as well. And we can also specify some optional layout arguments to further customize the plot. 
So then you get nice panel plots, which allow you to make assessments on soil parameters and possibly even create design soil profiles from that result. That was it for this video of Groundhog on CPT processing. Don't forget to celebrate Groundhog Day, perhaps by checking out some further functionality on the package, consulting the documentation some more, or getting active in the development of the package by contributing. You can also donate to the project by buying me a coffee, or you can shop for Groundhog Apparel on the Redbubble webshop. Thanks again for watching and see you for the next video.